Hello everybody, welcome to Bear Reviews with me, your host Jack, and we're now going to dive into uh, another Macher Brewery beer, who I've really enjoyed the stuff from um, previously. They've had some great beers come out of these guys. I don't want to say they're massively underrated because they've got quite a good reputation now, but they are really quite underrated and don't often see them um, out our way. But this is Arizona Beast, which is a collaboration brew with Arizona Wilderness from Arizona in the US. And uh, I'm assuming this one was done around the time of the uh, Copenhagen Beer Celebration, hence the guys were in town. Although it does have a fantastic kind of blurb on the side of it. Boosh. Which essentially says that um, this monster on the front, the Arizona Beast, um, has apparently been running around the Arizona, Arizona kind of countryside. Um, and it actually turns out to be the brewers or something like that because they're bearded as well. Um, and apparently they got lost on the way to Omaha to try and brew this beer. They, they ended up in somewhere like Sweden or Norway apparently, so Scandinavian geography was apparently quite difficult for them. Um, and also that you shouldn't try keeping up with the Arizona Wilderness Boys because they are fantastic drinkers of, of both soft and hard liquor apparently, which is always fun to say the least. So, what we actually have here is a, an IPA um, with uh, Polaris, Citra, Amarillo and Hercules in it. Um, I, can't, I, don't, you know, I don't actually know the ABV off the top of my head. Um, I think it's I think it's 7% on the dot. Oh, yeah, 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 7% on the dot. Um, with just a bit of pale malt, I think it's just Pilsner and some malted oats, um, hence why it's an oatmeal IPA, uh, which should give it a nice little bit of body with some paleness to it. Looks like it's got some good clarity. So we'll crack this fellow on open and see what we have. And I'm going to use a glass that I've just picked up in Seoul, which I think was pretty cool. It's uh, not one of my favourite glasses, I must say it's just a straight sided tumbler, but I wanted to kind of show it off because we've only just recently got it, but. Yeah, look, nice little Korean um, traditional garbed Mikula, um, yeah, Mikula soul and uh, traditional garb on the little Mikula person, which is quite cool. Um, nice to know a little bit of, I guess, Korean culture going into a glassware. Anyway, random aside. So actually what we have here is, yeah, it's very, very pale in colour. It's what I kind of, kind of like, I call that kind of strawy, wheaty yellow, ever so slight, kind of little bit of um, haze to it, but nothing much at all, no more than probably chill haze or a bit of hop haze. Nice carbonation, you can probably see, good fluffy head on the top as well. So let's get in there, give it a good old smell. Mmm. The really big tropical note on this. Mmm. It's um, kind of a sweet peachy, almost, um, lemon is not the right word, but, <coughs> pardon me, almost like a sweeter... Uh, like yuzu or, or like um, a, uh, yeah, like a Japanese citrus, almost like it's sweeter than a lemon, but it's not um, like a full blown orange sort of thing. If that makes any sense to any of you, um, maybe passion fruit is a good, a better, better kind of descriptor. Nice big aromatics on it. Um, definitely punches out the glass. Smells pretty darn fresh. Nice little prickle right at the back of just a little bit of dankness, a little bit of that kind of like fresh green herbaceous note. So cheers. Let's go to try. Mm. Oats are working, an absolute treat. It's definitely chunkier than your average IPA. I literally just, just tried the inhaler, <clears throat> which I thought had plenty of, plenty of body to it, but um, this just goes to show you how much body you can get into a beer, I suppose. And it's still a pale ale with a relatively small malt bill, um, although it is 7% of the alcohol, I hope, as well, but it's definitely got some chunk to it. Mighty fine carbonation as well. Um, Nice little bit of um, kind of sweet malt coming through there too, but but particularly the flavour wise, I'm definitely getting that um, passion fruity, almost mangoey, and, and I've said it, so I'm going to roll with it. The Japanese citrus, the kind of yuzu sort of flavour, <clears throat> ever so pecan, um, slightly more tropical kind of flavour of a grapefruit, I suppose. That's um, really interesting and it's very tasty. Nice combination of amarillo and citra, I suppose. Can't say I've actually used Polaris and. Um, before, so I'm not entirely sure of tasting notes for Polaris, um, but I've had Hercules and I'm assuming they're using it for bittering because it's a big bitter hot from Germany. Nice flavours to it, really interesting. Um, I'm loving the way the oats have kind of just made the beer a little bit more chunky um, and it's got some great, nice hoppy flavours to it on that nice tropical side. Good bitterness as well, actually. I haven't mentioned that. It finishes quite with a nice chunk of bitterness. Again, to kind of compare it to a beer that was less bitter, um, you can really kind of tell the difference and how they both work really well. Very tasty. I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, it's nice and fresh. Cool beer. Loving the artwork on it. Both some really cool breweries. I really recommend if you do find yourself out in um, in good old Denmark and Copenhagen, pick up plenty of these these boys' beers. They're fantastic. The Batch 1000 still got to be right up there. One of my favourite beers I've ever had. And this is a great IPA as well. So please like, favourite, comment, and subscribe. And until the next beer review. 
Cheers, everybody.